Folks, make sure that you take a good look at what you can see in front of you right here. This is the land of the free and indeed in this playthrough of Victoria 3, the freest land to ever exist. The United States of America is not just the greatest nation on earth, but it will also be the freest one because today I will build literally not a single economic building and see whether we can still succeed. Now that approach sounds a bit odd in Victoria 3 because everything up until now was manual. If you didn't build anything, then the GDP wouldn't rise and you would simply fall behind. In the open beta 1.2, this is very different. We have the autonomous investment pool now and you can see it already. The aristocrats are investing in rice farms in Louisiana. What I want to try here today with the United States is I want to build a country that is essentially almost as ANCAP as it possibly could be. I want to build a nation that basically has no expenses, barely any revenue, barely taxes anybody and still functions maybe even as a giant on the world stage. Fundamentally, the investment pool is not actually that different from what is going on in 1.1.2. Obviously, if your building is making a profit, a part of that actually goes into the investment pool and just lingers there. But instead of the player making decisions of where this is going, the pop types that are investing the money make decisions around this. You can see it right here, the aristocrats are building something in Louisiana. Next time it might be the capitalists. This all heavily, heavily depends on who actually pays the money in. So, if we want a free and highly industrialized America, we need to try and focus as much as we can to sort of push for the industrialists here. Obviously slavery and obviously the landowners are bad, so we definitely need to get rid of those, but let's try to do that in a fairly historical manner. For starters, I'm gonna do an insane opening move that you should never do. We're going to move away from per capita taxation to the objectively worst form of taxation, consumption-based taxation. And see, isn't that nice? The southern planters, the rural folk, and the trade unions united, and most importantly, the southern planters are actually doing something useful for once. Now, as in any other Victoria game, research is incredibly important. We're first going to pick up nationalism here. This will allow us to unify with Texas. The Lone Star State, of course, belongs to the Union. And then we're going to pick up only production tax. Now, military isn't too bad, but we really need these. Because the production tax will be the only things that will allow me to really mess with the process that works in the economy. Since I'm not going to invest anything myself. Now, this feature is the peak of features. The fact that I can pin this here so that I can keep track of it and man, paper really needs to be improved here, is really useful because when it comes to market prices, this is really our only tool if we aren't building anything manually. The reason for this is because, you know, I can regulate how much of this is being used, what production methods are there, and with that, drive further demand. You're going to see this in the future here in this playthrough. I hope that I can actually pull it off just for the record, but this is ultimately one of the biggest tools that we have. On top of this, I will influence taxes because once they like us, we can actually, well, annex them, or at the very least, we can do that if they survive and Britain also needs to be our friend so that I can get the Oregon Treaty. And there you go. They are now building their rice farms. And what is going on here? Right. This is Andrew Jackson's Indian Removal Act. Um, as long as he's in business, I guess I'm just going to keep that going. How are they doing? Oh, look at that. Yeah, the Texans are going to win this battle, which means that I can annex them thereafter. Very, very nice. All right, now I'm going to give you a fair warning before you do this at home. Uh, playing it the way that I'm playing it is incredibly stupid. Early on in the game, the investment pool is obviously tiny because there are very, very few industries, which means there's very few dividends, which means there's very little money going in here. Currently, they're only building one building and they literally cannot afford more. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is still fine. I think we're going to make it, but the, inf uh, the important thing to note here is that we can still help them. We can set the taxation level to very low, which keeps most of the money in the dividends and with that in the investment pool. And we can try to sort of work into their direction. You see right here, they immediately responded. We have a paper shortage as we were able to see right there. And they immediately saw the benefit of building more paper. This is really good because this is ultimately, if you never build anything yourself, how you drive the market here. You want to create supply and demand either by trading or by changing production methods or, in this case, by building more construction sectors, even if it costs us a lot of money. And then, you know, for example, building a lot more universities. We can go on here and we can drive demand simply by ourselves, using up a couple of these resources here, which then creates more demand and lets the capitalists build more buildings. Oh boy. Okay, first try. Consumption-based taxation is here. Thank you very much. That is, of course, basically the entire use that we have for the slavers. Now, the election here is looking pretty bad. Wow, the Free Trade Party is getting annihilated. Uh, it looks like the Democratic Party will win once more. Um, yeah, let's see where we go from there. This is, uh, this is not good news for the very free United States. 
Uh, check it out. I'm so sorry for the Great Sioux Nation, but we will have to do this to them. Um, we are actually getting something else here in 1.2 than what we were getting in 1.1.2. In 1.1.2, you would have just annexed them. Here, we instead get colonization rights, which, while we then have a truce with them, makes us colonize them faster. Uh, if we give up, you can see that they all of these are set to primary demands. We could technically do that and they get all of these, but yeah, obviously. I'm just going to take, let's say, Winfield Scott right here. And I think even with his just three units, he can probably defeat the Great Sioux Nation. It's a shame, but we have to do it. I mean, America needs to be all 50 states, and this year is a couple of them. Oh yeah, and the election is over, and you can see the Democratic Party, Andrew Jackson, they are still in control. And with that, slavery stays exactly where it is. I don't think I'm even gonna reform the government here unless somebody were to be added to the new parties here. No, that's not the case. We don't really need the armed forces. Let's just leave it where it is. And um, looks like slavery is still on the menu. Oh man, and you know, normally I would have probably said Bleeding Kansas, uh, where, where the hell is Kansas? It's this state right here, right? Bleeding Kansas, uh, normally we might just say, you know what, this will be a free state, but since Andrew Jackson is in charge, yeah, Kansas will be a slave state. This will strengthen the CSA when they do rise up, which I hope they will, because it's just cinematic, right? But yeah, I don't like that. You know what, let's just roleplay even more. The clay proviso has been suggested, which would make it so that, for example, slavery would be abolished in the West. You know what, I'm just, I'm gonna reject it. Expand slavery in the West. This is, I'm gonna roleplay here as Andrew Jackson, even though this is the opposite of where we want to be. I'll give it to them. You know what, let's see where this goes. And Texan statehood has been completed. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Welcome to America. And I believe, yeah, they are a slave state. Um, who else is a slave state here? Can I tell you? Yeah, you are. Kansas is a slave state. What about Colorado? They don't appear to be a slave state. Missouri is a slave state, of course. Arkansas. Man, uh, we'll see who joins the CSA when we actually make it illegal here. Yeah, and see, this is what I really like about the autonomous investment pool. Instead of me just investing into industrialization, every now and again, just because it's profitable, the aristocrats will get a plantation or something similar in. All right, Jesus Christ, what is actually going on in the Indian territory? They're having a, a revolution, I think. I mean, Jesus Christ, what actually is going on there? Is this related to... Wow, uh, is this related to the Trail of Tears and how harsh I've been on it? Man. This looks, yeah, they have all of these emergency reliefs on, and yet, obviously, it isn't working out. Trail of Tears, wow. Oh, I have been as harsh as I possibly could be, and this is the reaction. Wow. Um, I am. Andrew Jackson is a monster in this. Jesus. Well, uh, send in the troops. All right, now, both of these are very important. Nitroglycerin, we can change a bunch of stuff here, but then the abolitionists martyred him. Um, we can get Henry Clay to become an abolitionist. He's intelligentsia. I'm pretty sure they basically already support it, right? Anti-slavery? Yeah, this doesn't really change much. This abolitionist agitation must be stopped. This is the armed forces. Um, I think for the moment... I mean, I gotta be honest with you. Um, I'm Andrew Jackson. Man, I am role-playing in the opposite direction here. But let's go. Yeah, sure. The armed forces are also evil now. Christ. Yeah, wow. Uh, oof. Now, this is a really good example right here of how I'm influencing the actual investment pool. I have created a shortage, and it hurts, don't get me wrong here, because we are currently lacking lead. Now, this is very important, because this also makes lead incredibly, incredibly profitable, and obviously, the capitalists would like to invest in this as much as they can. You can see it right here, they're building one lead mine, and they're already starting up to build another one. This is really good, it will eventually make our lead supply much, much better, and it just makes it so that, yeah, sure, you might have a shortage for a moment, but the market will take care of it. It's the invisible hand of the market. All right, we had a new election. Um, yeah, no, it didn't really go any differently. We still have Andrew Jackson. Technically, his third term, I guess. Well, buddy, uh, he's succeeding in whatever he set out to do. Oh my god, the caning of Henry Clay. Uh, the Clay Proviso that was suggesting to ban slavery in the West, and now he's getting caned by Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is out of control in this playthrough. Um, I could make him step down. Man, that is interesting. That is very interesting. I gotta tell you, I think this is one step too far. He assaulted a citizen. Get out of office. Now, what did now happen to the rural folk? They are now reformers. Carter, Reynolds, maybe they saw the, <laughs> the issue with their ways right here. And this, of course, does change how government looks. You know what? Now I'm gonna change the government. The Whig Party will come into government with Abraham Lincoln in it. Um... Now, technology that we really want right here is steam donkey. It's going to take some time, three years, but this is important because this will let me use steam donkeys, which use engines. And currently, we're not producing any engines, which means the AI isn't really seeing a demand for it, which means they're not building it, which means we're not getting any railways. 
Once we have Steam Donkey, once I can create a demand for this, we will be seeing railways being built as well. And those are, of course, incredibly important. And from there, obviously, we will go on and just, uh, yeah, get more of this beautiful, beautiful econ tech right here. Ah, it's that time of the day. Manifest Destiny. Um, I think in one year or two, we're gonna start. We're gonna, we're gonna go against Mexico right here, and we're gonna be the state that is quite literally just the army and hopefully beat them. And you know what, I think we might as well integrate a couple of states. It's pretty cheap, um, and we will have the entire west here that is still colonies, which means people will move towards them. Uh, we can just, yeah, take this entire thing in. Next up would be Texas, but obviously we don't have the entirety of it. Yeah, uh, we're gonna move slowly but surely towards the west. This is a pretty good start, though. You can also see that we're making progress with the investment pool. Not much yet, but we're getting there. We now have two projects running steadily at the same time. That's pretty good. Definitely way better than at the start of the game, but it's still very slow. If we compare this to, for example, Britain, uh, yeah, currently they're running away with it. Okay, new elections, and we do no longer have Andrew Jackson. He ruined his chances with that caning. And all of a sudden, the rural folk are stealing all the votes from the Democratic Party. Um, I don't think this is amazing news. The Free Trade Party is still doing fairly poorly. Uh, despite everything, the industrialists clearly aren't rich enough yet. But, hey, this should, or this could mean that the Democratic Party will stop being in control. And alright, you know what? We are losing a little bit of money, but I think we have a fairly decent defense industry. Yeah, they, they like building arms industries, even if it literally... Yeah, but it will be used by us when we now declare war against Mexico. And um, let me just take a look at this. So we have a whole bunch of return state uh, CBs right here. I think Texas, we actually just need to conquer. Sadly, you don't see it, but you know what? We're going to declare war here for... Oh, God. Oh, there you go. Mexican Colorado. So this is the smartest choice I can do. With Nevada, Britain, Russia, and the Hudson Bay Company may get involved with this one... Nobody's going to get involved, and I think that is a great idea. Now, the way this works in 1.2 is actually really beneficial. Normally, in 1.1.2, Mexico would repeatedly back down, and everybody hated life. In this one, I can make all of these primary war goals. And this now means that I can click these buttons right here with the remaining maneuvers, making all of these into primary demands, even if they simply back down. I get all of this. This is really good, in particular for everything, of course, going on right here. It gives you a whole lot more infamy. But since nobody else is active in the strategic region, I think we're going to get away with it. I could technically make them revoke their claim. Um, you know what, let me just make sure here. If I miss a single province, I would cry, but I think we have them all. My god, uh, we better have them all, right? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and actually get some more reparations. That's always a good idea. And then, Zachary Taylor, why don't you come? Uh, because you should, of course, mean business right here. Yeah, let's just raise some conscripts right here. We don't want too many. I think 24 just here from Ohio. Is a very dangerous state, should be enough. And on top of that, actually, let's just use the new designate strategic objective. This makes it so that your generals will try to advance into this direction. And they do it quite reliably, actually. So, you know what? Let's just select their capital and let's get off here. Ooh, and look at that. Yeah, the Democratic Party is down to 50%. Now, this does change how we're looking in terms of stability, but right now, they're still holding on to power. But... We do have some other viable coalitions. I just don't think that the Democrats would work with the industrialists right now. The actual president is Zachary Taylor, so just another slaver, basically. Let's hope that we can get away from that in the coming days. Oh, and Jesus, me beating up the Mexicans makes it so that apparently the Apache are beating them. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate for you, Mexico. If they were to lose that, though... Uh, New Mexico and Arizona would go to the Apache. I don't think we would really mind. Because ultimately that just means I have to colonize them. Uh, it's certainly an interesting conundrum though. And oh my god, you are kidding me, right? So, Carter Reynolds retired, or died, whatever it may be. Alfred Suttle takes over the rural folk and he's a slaver. This is just Andrew Jackson 2.0. They just won't let it go. And yeah, they are going to rejoin the Democratic Party. Uh <laughs> This is going to be a pretty interesting scenario, all things considered. Can I just, yeah, I can just literally take them back into government, which is great. It gives us loyalists, but my god, um, the slavers are in control of this country right now. There's no other way of putting it. Well, and there you have it. I think this war was significantly worse for the Mexicans than the original actual American war, because man, they got driven out by the Apache. Now they owe us actual reparations. The Apache get absolutely nothing out of it. This is, this is, uh, yeah, this is a, a terrible, terrible United States we're playing so far. All right, and we got a new election here, the election of 1848. And it looks like the Democratic Party is once again going to sweep the damn floor. Uh, yeah, um, the Democratic Party is winning. 74% projected vote, but we do have an event here that will 
cancel their momentum. Ooh, I would love to get Zachary Taylor to lose popularity. That is so, so big in these sort of elections. Obviously, the momentum here already means a lot, but you know what? I'm gonna make him much less popular because this will long term have a, a lot of a big impact on the attraction that the Southern Planters have. We need to whittle them down. You can see it even right here, since they are investing their own money, and I'm not building anything to influence that, their cloud has been pretty steady. This is a difficult situation. Oh, wow. Britain did me a huge favor. Are you kidding me? Normally, as the US, you have to go and actually take the Oregon uh, Trail right here. You have to explore it. But instead, Britain did it. Which means that I get this territory much, much earlier than I otherwise would have. Wow. Yeah, that is a most amicable treaty. Look at that. We are almost complete already. Very, very nice. Jesus. Democratic Party. 71%. Um... We have a righteous government. Obviously, I will reform it. The Whig Party will be in the opposition and unified. I think the next election will be the first one where the Whig Party stands an actual chance because, uh, a chance because they will all be together. Look at... Oh my god, every single one of them is an abolitionist. Man, this is, I, I think, what the experience was meant to be. It's just that so far, Victoria 3 was never balanced enough to get this stuff. I am so eager to see the next election. I hope the Liberals win. If not, then we still have one more election to see how it goes. But I think the intelligentsia in particular and the industrialists are growing quite significantly. And maybe even most importantly, I do think they also have leaders that are actually quite well liked. If we take a look at the rural folk, yep, disliked. And if we look at him, just neutral. Let's hope that the next election goes well. See, they are now building railways everywhere. And this is really, really nice. Again, I would love to have a bigger investment pool, but this actually will lead directly to it. Transportation is a good that we can really drive up in price. Not only is it obviously necessary to build these just for purposes of actual infrastructure, but we have full control over, for example, all of these optimization techs. This makes it so that since these are owned by industrialists, these railways are generating a whole bunch of quite rich industrialists that then indeed can give back to the actual investment pool. And oh my god, it's actually happening. Can you believe this? So the momentum here is definitely on our side. Uh, Alfred Suttle's popularity is quite low, which is why this impacts us the way that it does, or rather why we're benefiting the way that, uh, that we are. Um, wow, we are actually going to get away with the very first victory for the liberal forces in the US in this playthrough right here in the 1852 campaign, and unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong. But the Whig party looks like it's going to get elected with the sole purpose of making slavery illegal. I think we're going to get a civil war, and I'm incredibly excited for it. And look at that, the Whig party has won. Abraham Lincoln is the president. I am... I, I actually cannot believe this. Now, we have a very, very short majority, which makes this an unacceptable government. This is... I mean, yeah, this is exactly how it is supposed to be. Um, The thing that I'd really like to do is obviously this. Are we ready for this? The problem that I have with this is that the armed forces are on their side as well. Would you really do this sort of reform if the army says, you know what, I am a slaver? Or you know what actually would be nice? Moving towards guaranteed liberties. I, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. Let's try to do this. Uh, this is definitely something that Abraham Lincoln also has on his agenda. This is literally his actual IG. All right, now tech-wise, I think we should move on to society techs. Yes, we have a lot of production stuff going on here, but society is really good if you want to strengthen the industrialists. If we get this in 21 months, we can put more industrialists in power and maybe strengthen the industrialists enough that we can then get rid of slavery. We have to see how this goes. Let's just get some society techs. And oh, wow, we actually passed it first try. Look at that. Guaranteed liberties. Um, that's amazing. So this now is an actual successful item on our agenda. Petite bourgeoisie. How could you do this to me? <laughs> How could you do this to me? Ah, uh, the next election is going to be rough, I think. Uh, we're not going to kickstart the industrialists. I will literally switch every single thing I can to publicly traded just so that we have more capitalists, which then hopefully really switch things around in terms of the, uh, the power balance. This is what we need if we want to make this work. Well, the good news is the Mexican session fired. This was our destiny. The bad news is like the Democratic Party is, is sweeping this one, huh? Man. Oh boy, yeah. This election is over. Alfred Suttle is the new president and Jesus Christ, the petite bourgeoisie are the traitors of this election. So we're gonna see and wait for the 1860 election. This is my pledge right here. If the conservative forces win in 1860, we will have a civil war where slave trade is to be made legal. If they lose, we will have a civil war where slavery banned is to be made Ill uh, illegal. Right, uh, legal, whatever. We're going to have one way or another, a civil war in 1860 in the historical circumstances. 
Let's hope that liberty prevails, huh? All right, we are about a year out from the upcoming election. I've done a lot. I have traded like crazy. In particular, I have, of course, traded everything related to goods that make industrialists rich so that these goods stay fairly expensive, even if it's not that great for our economy, so that the industrialists make money, become more powerful, give more back into the investment pool. I've set ourselves up in a situation where we are losing money steadily, but we are in a position where, again, this empowers the people that make the most money. Now, I haven't built anything except, again, the buildings that are oriented towards the state that the AI cannot build. And let's take a look at our situation. You can see that New York and Pennsylvania are our centers of GDP, but Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Virginia, North Carolina, man, the South is quite built up and I am, I am afraid of it. You can also see that, yep, the armed force is very weak because obviously we only really work with conscripts. They are still slavers. Southern uh, plant owners, uh, planters, of course, slavers. Rural folks, still slavers. Petite bourgeoisie, not slavers, just kind of racist, I guess. This is the worrying part. I hope that they will not be joining anything related to the rebellion if it were to occur. Now, will we even win the election? Honestly, I'm not sure. The positive news that I have is that Benedict Hobart, who would be running as our presidential candidate, is more popular than Abraham Lincoln right here. He will still be there on our side. He will give us encouraging thoughts, but that is about it. On the other hand, Southern planters have a neutral fella and, this, uh, and the rural folk, that is what I meant, yep, hated. Minus 75. He has become a bandit. I hope that this will mean that we can actually win that election and then try to pass that law. Will we win the civil war? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I have no idea. Let's find out, okay? This is going to be a difficult, difficult situation, but I am excited because, man... I have never played a United States of America that was this contentious and we are behind a bit on, you know, everything related to economy, of course, look at this, 104 million, but we're still doing okay, I think, all things considered. So, let's just survive here. Oh my god, we have a surprise contender. This is unbelievable. The petite bourgeoisie left the Democratic Party, who has a momentum of minus 76%. Let me actually check why they left. I think it is just because of the market liberalism, right? They fundamentally just decided, yeah, we would like market li liberalism more than we want slavery. And they are, they appear to be, I should say, sweeping the election. Holy moly. What is definitely certain is that the Democratic Party is entirely dissolving. Yeah, they're losing massively. The Whig Party is in a pretty do uh, good position. Actually, wow, they, yeah, they are meant to get the most votes here and might enter a coalition with the Petite Bourgeoisie. And then we got a civil war on our hands. Um, let's see how this goes. The election is in. What is the most likely coalition? Yeah, that is what I thought. The Whig Party under the leadership of Benedict Hobart together with the Free Trade Party. I think the trade-off here is... The Petit Bourgeoisie is saying, give us laissez-faire. All right, I think here's how we play this. We are first going to pass laissez-faire, and then we're going to go against legacy slavery. This should be pretty fast as well. It will just agitate the trade unions and the rural folk. Who cares? Let's get laissez-faire out of here. 40.6% is pretty fast as well, and then we escalate the situation. All right, here we have laissez-faire. This will be amazing for our country, and I'm pretty sure that this is basically the snowball point. This is when we will start taking off, because now our capitalists will put so much money in here, it will be absolutely insane. You know what the next step is? Yeah, I think it's time to make some southerners mad. Let's get this law passed, and let's see whether we're gonna face a rebellion. Oh, speak of the devil. Preserve legacy slavery. We have a really strong abolitionist alliance here, but then there they are. The Southern Planters and the Armed Forces. We can never trust the military again, I think, in this country. Uh, it's a bit odd, the rural folk are currently in Restore Interventionism because, yeah, they care about this, but, I mean, they are also slavers. I, I don't know, I guess that they care more about interventionism and laissez-faire than this, be that as it may. Maybe we're gonna reward them, maybe we're not gonna oust them, but the Southern Planters are trying to rebel and obviously I actually kind of need them and want them to because... Civil War would be cool, right? Let's take a look at the borders that we would be getting if they were to rebel right- Oh my god. That is essentially perfect. Look at that. They're taking a bit more in the northeast there, but yeah, this is really, really neat. If they were to rebel, by the way, they would also get none other, of course, than Robert E. Lee. Man, I would- I really hope this is gonna work. I think this is the first time since pre-release that I am experiencing an American Civil War in Victoria 3. And it still wasn't easy to get, mind you. I had to, you know, get their generals to actually give them political power and so on. But here we are, the Southern Declaration of Secession. A convention of pro-slavery states have declared their independence from us as the Confederate States of America. The Union has been challenged, but will not yield so easily. My president says, a house divided against itself cannot stand for the Union. 
Now I can already tell you, we're gonna continue this and reconstruction in the next video, but right now I'm gonna determine that Ulysses Grant, the alcoholic, is going to actually advance right here on the main line. And then Sherman, for the moment, is going to defend Washington DC. Probably the most important job. Let's get this done and let's hope that the Confederates will be defeated once and for all.